I love movies, and if you clicked on this video, it's likely you do as well. I honestly think that it's one of the best creations that humans have produced throughout history. It's a beautiful medium that allows us to relay stories and mythology across time to various different cultures and places. They can invoke deep emotions in people and literally change the course of their life. Or they can provide a momentary escape from reality into a world that is more exciting and happier than the one they live in now. In a movie, things are always interesting because they have been choreographed and crafted to be compelling and immersive. In everyday life, things can be just so monotonous and dull. We go to work, see the same people, do the same things, over and over again. But in film, often the case is that everything that happens is working towards an interesting payoff, and everything that was shown happened for a reason. I think the best place to start with how movies captivate us is by discussing the escapism they provide and how they can help you imagine and try and grasp a sense of control. This is something that's embodied by the popular literally me character. I think the most relatable thing about them is how they long to have ownership over their life. The act of fighting to take control of your existence is a good thing, and it's motivating to the audience to see that dream of theirs enacted in someone. But the entertaining and theatrical aspect of the characters are how they often end up going overboard with their newfound control and showing the negatives that that overcorrection can lead to as well. A good example of this is in Lester Burnham from American Beauty. He lives a fairly mundane and ordinary existence that many of us can relate to. And you see his dissatisfaction with his position in life, as well as within his own family. The motivating and aspirational aspects of his character are how he gets reinvigorated in life. You don't get to tell me what to do ever again. His mindset changes and he becomes happier. He starts exercising, eating healthy, and even gets a new friend that he can connect with. The dramatic moral conundrum comes from the fact that this all stemmed from him being interested in pursuing a sexual relationship with his daughter's underage friend. I don't think you need to adopt every facet of a person's character to find value and wisdom and positive aspects of their life. However, the truth is, for some of the other inappropriate things that he does when rebelling, I think we'd be lying to ourselves if we said we never had similar desires. Yeah! Don't interrupt me, honey. Look at his contentment when he finally tells off his wife and stands up for himself. Don't tell me you've never fantasized about living out a similar moment in your own life. It's fun to see these behaviors enacted on screen, whether we agree with them being justified or not. I think wanting to be seen is a universal desire that we all share. Of course, the magnitude of this varies person to person, but no matter how secluded you are, I think deep down, everybody wants to be seen by at least one other person. I said, for my whole life, I didn't know if I even really existed. But I do. And people are starting to notice. And as I mentioned earlier, I think the control that these characters gain over their lives is one of the most enviable aspects of them. In Fight Club and American Beauty, they both blackmail their employers to get into a basically free state of life that would be a dream to anybody. Can you prove that you didn't offer to save my job if I let you blow me? You are one twisted fuck. I am Jack's smirking revenge. Oh! They both set up a situation where they can quit their full-time job but still get their salary. So now, they have all this free time in their lives to pursue what they actually want to, while still remaining financially stable. It's sad to realize that this arrangement likely isn't available to us, so it makes the fantasy of living through their world even more appealing. The last aspect on the topic of control that I find interesting isn't found in the movies themselves, but it's around the idea of watching them. No matter how hard work was, or how annoying my week has been, or any other chaos in my life, there's a small aspect of control I can have about choosing what movie I want to watch. 
I can shut out the world, put my phone down, and isolate myself in this amazing art form. Escaping to a new world in movies or video games is a good amount of what I look forward to in my day. Is there something wrong with spending so much time in a digital world? It always feels a bit pathetic and awkward when the topic of friends come up with coworkers or family members. When I say that I honestly don't have any, I get along fine with my colleagues and see my family on special occasions, so it's not like I'm a total recluse. I just don't hang out with a group of guys or anyone else on purpose. I feel like if I were to get married, I wouldn't even have anybody to be my best man. Wait, I wonder if they made a movie about that. I love you, man. I love you, bro, Montana. I just feel like there's so much wasted time and social hula hoops that you have to jump through with people before you can have a meaningful conversation or a relationship that's mutually beneficial. If I want to have a deep conversation about philosophy, I know that I can put on a film that makes that guaranteed to happen. If I want to laugh or feel excited, there's movies that do that as well. Sometimes I do wonder what it would be like to have a group of close friends to connect with, but I feel my significant other, family, and films can accurately meet all those types of needs. Films can help unblock emotions in you that you otherwise would have no access to. They can cause you to view the world in different and new ways that you never would have thought possible. I was able to cry for the first time in the better part of a decade while watching the ending of 1917. I'm not exactly sure why though, because it was probably my sixth or seventh time watching that film. But for whatever reason, it gave me a desperately needed release that I couldn't achieve anywhere else in my life. That feeling is what I chase, and being able to rewatch films over and over again but still being moved by them is such an incredible sensation. But it helps me remember. I need to remember. I want to hold on to this feeling and carry it with me through my day. Much of the dialogue throughout American Beauty touches on this idea about how they can become so overwhelmed by the sensation of beauty, but then learning to let it go. I think this is easier said than done, because the worry is that if you release it, it will slip away forever and you can never find it again. So I try to hold on to beauty as intensely as I can, and many aspects of film help accomplish that for me. There's another strange feeling that I've come across when watching movies that I want to try and address. It's like a mixture of sadness and astonishment. I encounter this feeling during and after films like Seven, Requiem for a Dream, or Prisoners. It's like my mind's trying to recover from the bewilderment at the story that just unfolded, and how true to life and compelling the characters felt. The dreariness and heartache that these films can cause can stay with you long after you're done watching them. They somehow fill me with a sense of depression and hollowness, but I like it. And that's a thrilling thing to witness, because this is also a feeling that I chase, but I'm not entirely sure why. It doesn't always necessarily make me feel happy, but what it does do is it makes me feel. So whatever emotions movies invoke, good or bad, they're still enveloping enough to make me want to keep seeking them. When I was your age, I flipped burgers all summer just to be able to buy an 8-track. That sucks. No, actually, it was great. All I did was party and get laid. I had my whole life ahead of me. Nostalgia is a very distinctive feeling that films can induce onto the viewer. There's movies that can make us feel nostalgic for a place we once visited or for a happier time in our childhood. They can put us in a mindset that helps us remember how hopeful and uncomplicated life used to be. Films can also produce an ache of nostalgia for a life that you've never had. Take this scene from American Beauty when they're walking home under the trees. This sequence makes me miss being young. It makes me reminisce and feel envious of a past that I didn't have. I feel like I wasted my youth by not trying to better myself and not enjoying things more. If I had the knowledge and current mindset that I do now, what more could I have accomplished? I imagine how good I would be at video editing or music production if I had actually applied myself when I was younger. What was I even spending my time doing? Nostalgia makes us feel like our pasts are some kind of magical, happy setting that we can reminisce about, even though oftentimes that's not true to how it was. 
For example, throughout high school and a bit after, I had this summer job in California where I would work in or around the strawberry fields, doing things like planting, dumping out old product, and weed hacking. That setting and working with those guys at that age really has an impact on your mentality. At the time, I hated it and dreaded working like that for the rest of my life, like a lot of these people would have to. It's just such an exhausting and soul-crushing environment. I'd had enough work experience by then to think to myself, I know I hate everything about this now, but because I'm a kid, I wonder if I will ever look back nostalgically on this place, like I had done with other previous jobs that I had hated at the time but now missed. And you know what? I really do miss it. I don't miss the struggling and demoralizing feelings, but I just somehow miss that time period in my life. The guys there would say some of the funniest and most foul stuff you could ever hear, and you need that kind of humor to make it through the day in that type of environment. It's a time in my life that I'll never get back. I really did have my whole life ahead of me. The possibilities of what I could become were endless, and that's why this nostalgic feeling is so mesmerizing. Because, like I said, at the time, I hated it. But through the lens of nostalgia, I somehow miss it now. I also know that 10 years from now, when I look back on my current job that I hate, somehow, I'll have that same nostalgic feeling again. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Films that can make you happy about your past, even when it wasn't that great, is a really beautiful thing. This strange, depressive, but somehow hopeful state is something I still experience frequently. The last feeling I want to touch on is one that's similar to what I was describing in the previous chapter about trying to hold on to beauty, and I want to see how other people would describe this emotion. It's a feeling that I occasionally get when I watch an amazing film, read a great book, or play an awesome video game. I sometimes feel this crushing sense of depression when I should feel happy. The fact that it was so good and I enjoyed it so much fills me with sadness because I know that I can't live in that state constantly. I worry about when I'll ever get enough time on my hands again to fully indulge myself in this magical way. I try to hold on to the joy I got from it, but it's impossible to keep. I wish I could enact this feeling into you as the viewers so you could fully understand what I'm talking about. But part of the beauty of these moments is how specific and unique they are to each and every one of us. So it seems like much of the appreciation of life I get comes from digital or quote artificial sources. But these art forms are real. They are a culmination of hundreds or even thousands of people's creativity, time, and life experiences. Each project has the lingering emotions and the imaginative input from real people. So a medium that can take all that talent and transform it into something new is truly a spectacular thing to witness. If you want to support this channel even further, consider joining my Patreon. You can participate in monthly Q&As and get insight to what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you again soon.